Hey everyone, it's Dane again. Um, tonight, I have a minute to look at this AV Famicom that uh, my buddy Graveyard Duck over at the Retro Game Boards forums sent me to take a look at. Now, uh, originally when he sent me this, uh, he sent it to me on the off chance that uh, I could get it working. This was a totally dead AV Famicom. Um, and at the time, I, I cracked the thing open and looked in there determined that the voltage regulator was bad just by measuring the input and output on that IC. And I uh, can see that thing was dead. Put a new voltage regulator in it, thing fired right up. Um, and so he's been getting some use out of it, but he made uh, the mistake that so many AV Fami, uh, North American AV Fami users have made anyway, and accidentally plugged a uh, regular North American NES uh, AC adapter into it. And that is not what this thing takes. So, um, he hit me up, he's like, dude, uh, there was pop and some smoke, and, you know, I was really worried about this thing. So, uh, you know, can you please take a look at it? I was like, yeah, man, send it on over. And uh, because I'm waiting for some CDX parts that I forgot to order, uh, I actually have a minute to do this now. Uh, good news uh, is that um, I basically plugged a Sega Genesis 1 AC adapter into this, which will work and uh, put in my copy of uh, uh, Famicom Mario 3 into it, waited a little bit, and it actually turned on. I could see that it was getting some video signal out, uh, but something's not right. It's taking too long to actually fire up. So I think what we'll do here is actually crack this thing open, take a look, you know, visually inspect it, see if there's anything weird, um, probably measure the voltages on the... Uh, uh, power regulator, which if anything got damaged, it's probably that. Uh, maybe some of the, the caps on the power board. Uh, but yeah, we'll take a look at that stuff, uh, see if everything is doing what it should be, and uh, you know, get this thing uh, running good as new uh, for Graveyard Duck. So let's get to it. Okay, let's get this thing open and see what's going on. So uh, I've actually pulled the, uh, the screws out of this already, so we should be able to just remove this upper shell. Okay. All right. Nothing on this part of the board that I'm seeing anyway, uh, which is good. My guess if anything went wrong, it's going to be something uh, back in there. So let's go ahead and get this opened up. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera there. Actually, you know what? You pull some screws out. You don't need to see me do that. It's kind of boring. I'm going to cut this, pull all the screws out, get the board out of here, and uh, if anything interesting uh, pops up while I'm doing that, I'll be right back and show you. Okay, got the uh, these screws removed. So there's only two, four, five here, and just pull those out. This thing will pull right out of the bottom. Uh, now this next part is a little bit different. It's nothing crazy, but um, figured it is kind of interesting. So to get this um, great big heat sink off of here, um, we need to pull these two sh uh, screws from the bottom, and we actually need to get in there uh, at this screw. There we go, we can see it that is attached to the voltage regulator, uh, that is attaching the, the voltage regulator to this a great big heat sink here. So <clears throat> that part I thought I would show. Also good to keep in mind when you're working on this that uh, these screws have these little kind of washer deals on there are the ones that secure that heat sink to the motherboard. Okay, so that's free now, um, other than the voltage regulator. Now, I don't have a good way that I can really show that particular part of it. So, what you have to do is, and now I have a magnetic tip screwdriver here, which helps for this, um, but you kind of hold your um, heat sink in place and then just get that to come loose. And it will pull right out of there, like so. So that is the heat sink removed. And you can see the screw that was still kind of hanging onto the voltage regulator right there. 
Okay, let's see what we can see here. Well, I can see my old work from before where I recapped this. You know, in interestingly, I do not see any, um, I don't really see any scorch marks or anything. Oh, you know what? This big power cap right here is totally bulged. Let's see if I can kind of get a shot of that from the side. So maybe kind of see it in silhouette. It's kind of hard to show from here, but that is actually bulged up pretty good. Let's see, maybe we can see it better from over here. So that should be totally flat across the top. That is definitely bulged up. So that we're going to replace. And I think just for good measure, I'm gonna re replace that voltage regulator uh, as well. Now I don't see any scorch marks or anything over here on this cap, but it's it's definitely it's definitely bulged. So we're gonna replace that. Let's see, so that's a 1000 mic, 25 volt. I think I've got one of those lying around. So I'm going to go locate a cap to replace this with, and I do have an extra uh, 78 SO5 right here, so I can replace that uh, if need be. I'll still I'll show you how to measure uh, the voltage on this, and even if this is reading is good, I'm probably going to replace it uh, after after that. I just want to make sure that that thing is is good to go. All right, I'm gonna go locate a cap and I'll be right back. Okay, back to it. I managed to find a uh, nice uh, 1000 microfarad 25 volt Nichicon capacitor. I was able to cannibalize it from a uh, Turbo Duo cap kit, which is no big deal. I'll just, uh, in fact, I just ordered a bunch of uh, these same ones, uh, but a uh, little bit higher grade uh, from Nichicon. Uh, just because it's good to have on hand. I never know when another one of these is going to come back in or when I could end up using them for something else. So usually if I run into something like this where it's a specific component, um, you know, I'll buy 10 of them, you know, or 20, something like that. Usually whatever the, like, next cost down is bulk uh, to have on hand, you just never know when you're going to need them uh, for the project you're working on or something down the road. Uh, so, yeah, this will work uh, just fine uh, to to replace that. So that is good to go. Uh, now, I think the next thing that we're going to want to check is this uh, this voltage regulator. So, uh, yeah, actually, let me go grab. Yeah, I'll go grab my tool and uh, my multimeter, and uh, we will uh, get that checked out. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here we have uh, our multimeter ready to go I have it set to voltage and uh, basically all that you have to do here is uh, put one ca contact on your ground plane um, that's usually going to be these areas you know around your screws here if you're not sure where one is on the board uh, it, these areas are, are pretty much always going to do it uh, and then we are going to uh, make we're always going to want to make sure not to bridge anything when we're when we're testing right so if I'm using my lead uh, to, to to touch one leg, I want to make darn sure that I don't uh, bridge two uh, at the same time with it and cause a bridge which can do more damage uh, since we're trying to fix it. Um, but yeah, so I have my uh, adapter plugged in and I'm just going to power this board on, uh, which it is now. Uh, I just switched uh, this on, sorry, my it's, it's a little bit uh, off uh, screen here, but uh, switched it on. So I'm going to put one contact on ground and we will touch the first leg here. And we can see it's outputting five volts, which is what it should be doing. And our input voltage, looks like it's coming in about 12 volts, which is correct. Um, so actually, you know, that, that voltage regulator is fine, um, but I'm just gonna replace it anyway. I'm, I'm leery um, knowing that that thing got like reverse polarity and and uh and i'm not even sure exactly what 
uh, like what the voltage is on, on that one off the top of my head. Um, but it got it got a little too much juice. So anyway, we're just going to replace that just to be sure. And uh, replace this cap. And I think that is probably going to do it. So uh, let's get started on that now. All right, let's get started removing our bad pieces. So uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this cap first right here. There's our bad cap. Yeah, that really is bulged. It's kind of funny if you set it on the top. It actually kind of kind of wobbles a bit. That should sit flat, just like that. So one way you can tell. All right, next up is going to be our, our voltage regulator, which are these three little bit taller pins right here. our bad potentially bad I should say voltage regulator um, by the way when I'm doing this what, what I'm actually listening for is making sure that uh, this is clear that I don't have any debris in there that I don't need to uh, clean it out with uh, with one of these guys I'm not trying to like shoot myself in the head with my my desoldering gun All right, we can turn that off. And uh, let's go ahead and fire up our soldering iron. And just move some stuff out of the way here. <laughs> Weaving my soldering iron through. Other ones, okay, so. First things first, let's go ahead and just do our, our voltage regulator first. And we're gonna put in another 78 SO5. Actually, we will do that second because there's kind of a trick to that. So we will go ahead and do our cap first. Now, you can see on the board itself, right here, there's a little plus indicating uh, the positive side, a little negative here indicating the negative. And the negative is this big stripe uh, on the back of the cap. That in just like so. Turn on my fume extractor. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Flux. Just a dab will do here. Once I, I secure one leg, I always like to flip the board over and make sure that that's sitting flush. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually just put my finger on that cap, re-wet that joint, and then push down kind of hard. Not real hard, but just enough to make sure that it's, it's really seated properly.
flush cuts. Okay, almost there. So this next part, you know, we have to remember that this voltage regulator needs to actually screw in to this heat sink. And you know, it's kind of funny that um, that that grease is actually still fresh from the the first one that I put on there. So I don't really need to put uh, any fresh. Uh, conductive grease on there and that's gonna be pretty much good to go uh, but basically we're going to secure this first we're going to actually put this into the heat sink first to make sure that it is lined up properly then we're going to set the whole thing down into the board and weld it from there And I don't have like a particular one I would recommend uh, over any of the others. Actually, this kind of. Oop, sorry about that. That kind of got off center for me a little bit, so I just want to make sure that that is facing the correct way. Sorry, I have to come off camera just a little bit to finish securing that. But you get the idea. Basically, we hook the 7805 or S05, excuse me, into our heat sink, and then we just drop that right down into the board. Like so. And uh, we can even go ahead and screw that into place. just to make sure that everything is, is really lined up properly. And I think just one, just one will do for now. And really once we're done here, we, we actually don't need to move anything else, so. There we go, good enough. Uh, but you can see that that actually just leaves those at the correct height um, to be soldered in exactly the way we want. That is that. So I think uh, that that pretty much did it. This should be good to go. Um, there was nothing else that I saw on here that, that looked like it was damaged. Um, so I'm going to put this other screw in, set this down in the bottom of the tray, and go check it. So let's go do that now. Okay, so tested it out, and apparently um, we're still having the delay on startup and actually discovered that when you press the reset button, it freezes, which is something I've never seen before. Um, but, you know, so far we've only replaced the one cap because uh, that was the one that was bulging, uh, you know, and from what I gather, usually if one's gone bad, you might as well replace the other ones uh, that are on the board just to be sure. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to test a couple um, to be sure, uh, you know, to see if they work um, just in general because I'm kind of curious to see if any of these are, these are blown out. I've got a little uh, tester I can use here uh, to see. 
But yeah, uh, let's just go ahead and, and pull some of these these other caps here and uh, see if we can't get to the bottom of this. pull that I'm curious about this one let's see if this still works let's see it's so small I'm not even quite sure I can get it to fit in my tester here but let's see what happens all right yeah so it's 428 nanofarad so that should be 0.428 microfarads so that appears to be good all right well, that's good to know of this first one here's what this says hmm interesting yeah so far these all seem to be more or less reading correctly but that's all right let's just go ahead and pull these uh, replace the other ones and I just think it's a good idea to do anyway um, so I have these one mic 50s here. So let's go ahead and do those first. So I actually found a bunch of those with my spares, because I, I actually don't have a kit for this right now, but I do have some spares, so. this guy here the nice thing about this is it's actually marked right on the board so I can see when I go to put these back in uh, this is a 6.3220 all right Go ahead and get these replaced. All right, so I was actually able to dig up replacements for all but one. So there's one cap that I'm going to have to try to reuse, and that is this 0.47 microfarad cap. Now that did measure um, correctly, so Hopefully that'll work okay, but let's go ahead and replace the rest of these and see if we can get this working right. So we have three of these um, one mic 50s. And actually, stand corrected, so it's listed back here as a one mic 50, uh, but you actually want to use a 47 uh, mic cap, at least according to the console 5 wiki. Um, yeah, C14 should be a 47 mic 6.3 volt. Um, in order to work right. 
So we will make sure that that is exactly what gets put in there. Actually, let's go ahead and do that first. Positive on the left, negative on the right. I'm going to bend this over just a little bit, kind of get that to stay in place. I'm going to turn on my fume extractor here. here I'm still still getting used to this new setup all right yeah we're actually sitting pretty flush there so I think we're going to trim these as I go. I don't always do that, but it does keep the bottom of the board a little neater as you're working. Oops, sorry about that. So that would be our new 47 6.3 right there. All right, let's do these one mic 50s next. Again, this is a positive on the left, negative on the right. Next, one mic 50. And positive on the left, negative on the right. Those look good. All right, next up, we'll do our two twenty six point three. It's another positive on the left, negative on the right. Yeah, this one kind of wants to wiggle around on us. I don't think there's actually much that's going to be done for that. So I'm going to load my iron first so I can kind of anchor this into place. Yep, that's enough to get it to stay put. Okay, looks pretty good. I 
hope this fixes it. Replacing caps is actually really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Uh, that part is not so bad. But the part that I have not gotten the hang yet, uh, hang of yet, is just kind of, you know, the, mo the more esoteric stuff. How do you track down if it's a CPU fault or PPU fault or something wrong with RAM or something like that. Um, but I figure I keep doing this and, and I'll figure all that stuff eventually. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, either on my own or just to help with people online, you know, kind of point me in the right direction. Um, that's one of my favorite things about this community, you know, is uh, when you can learn and, and help other people, you know. Um, all right, and so here is our 0.47 cap. 0.4750 volts. This one did register as okay. So hopefully that's good to go. Because I don't have any others on hand at the moment. I have like a 0.47, I have like a small ceramic cap that's a 35 volt, but uh, your voltages have to be above. Uh, at least meet or exceed uh, what is listed on the cap. Okay, looking good. All right, fingers crossed that did it. Let's go check. All right, let's see what we get. Fired right up, awesome. I think that is a fixed up AV Famicom. this game so much. I think I'm going to try to do a repro soon of this, uh, but translated, so it still has this music. And also has an updated Alucard sprite that looks more like Symphony of the Night. Well, I think... That proves that we have fixed up this AV fanning. Awesome. All right, I think that took care of it. We got Graveyard Ducks AV Famicom working good as new, and it really wasn't all that bad. You know, a lot of times with uh, retro gaming stuff, uh, something goes wrong, you feel like it's the end of the world. A lot of times it isn't. You know, sometimes it's a matter of uh, replacing a couple parts, plugging it in, and seeing that it still works. Uh, I was just happy to, to get to do this, you know. For me, there's a lot of satisfaction in knowing that there's another piece of retro hardware uh, that is not going to go to the dump, that is going to go back into someone's collection that they're going to get to use for years. Uh, so, Graveyard Duck, thanks for sending it to me. And um, thank you for being here and hanging out with me tonight. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, and if there's any uh, other things you'd like to see me do in the future, please let me know. I've got lots of stuff lined up, but I always love to hear from you. Uh, so yeah, this was a blast. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time. Bye now.